All right, good evening. We're live from Kelly Automotive Park as the Butler Blue Sox are back in town to host the Chillicothe Paints for the first of a two-game set. I'm Jaron Steele, joined by Kellen Gursky, and we were pretty much right where we left off whenever the Blue Sox went to Champion City last weekend. Uh, it's one and a half games behind them. Unfortunately, a couple of tough losses there for the Blue Sox. Uh, they took one out of three, and uh, we'll look to try to keep their strong play against the paints going here tonight and they'll have one of their better pitchers in Connor Coward on the hill. Yeah, and, and Coward uh, really this year has been super consistent, uh, kind of an, uh, a later acquisition obviously, uh, later in the year he came in, but since he has come in, he's been one of the top guys for sure in that uh, in that starting pitching rotation for the the Blue Sox and and who else would you rather have on the mound tonight if you're if you're the Blue Sox and obviously trying to uh, keep a hold of that uh, second place uh, standing at the moment, trying to keep a hold of that, and, and Coward uh, going to do all he can to do that tonight. Blue Sox committed 23 and 19, and the uh, Paints are 21 and 22. They won two out of three against West Virginia over the weekend. So, and their lineup tonight will be leading off number 16, Neil Lambert, followed by number four, Chris Petrucci. Then it will be number 15, Kyle, or I'm sorry, uh, Chad Roberts. Then number seven, Kyle Orloff is in the cleanup spot, followed by number 17, Dalton Bollinger. And number 34, the designated hitter tonight, Tanner Picnic, will bat in the sixth spot. In the seven hole is the right fielder, number 35, Peyton Newsom. Batting eighth will be number 28, Michael Ryan. And uh, rounding out the order will be number 26, Drake Peggs. On the hill for the paints will be Jacob Niggemeyer, and we'll talk a little bit more about him in the bottom half of the inning, but for the Blue Sox, it'll be Connor Coward. He's got a chance to maybe have a little bit of redemption. He threw a live uh, side pen in Champion City on Sunday, because they usually make that, you know, that yeah. bullpen uh, session two days before start, and unfortunately for him, it didn't go very well. 
He ended up giving up a grand slam, and the and the Blue Sox lost six to five. So a couple of days later, he gets to go right back up on the hill, and, and I'm sure he's going to be chomping at the bit to have a pretty good night. And the defense for him, uh, Gonzalez is behind the plate. Webb at first, Golikowski at second, Meeker at third, Parks at short, Murphy in left, Carew in center, Scott in right. Here's the first pitch. It is a called strike. First pitch tonight, 636. And it is pretty humid, nice mm -hmm. summer evening here. The you know, one is hit to left center. Going back is Murphy, and he's a couple steps short of the warning track. Makes the catch for the first out. Ball carried pretty well, but Murphy with a good read gets there for the first one. And the umpires now we got Garrett Proper behind home plate, and Jason Smith is on the bases. It was a nice play out there by Tanner Murphy. He's done that so well this year, tracking the ball and. Obviously, the sun's right in his eyes. He had to battle the sun a little bit there, but on the dead sprint, made a nice play. Popped off the top of the net by Petrucci. So right now, it's a very tight race in the Prospect League East. We got Champion City on top, 24 and 17. Butler, game and a half back at 23 and 19. Then West v Virginia, his uh, ball hit the left field again. And Murphy again is under for the second out. Uh, after that, uh, West Virginia is 21 and 19. They're two and a half back. We got three with them this this week. And then uh, Chillicothe is in the 21 and 22. And then Kokomo at 19 and 21. So everybody's within four and a half games mm -hmm. in this division, which could make it a pretty interesting playoff race coming down the stretch. Yeah, definitely, no doubt about it. And, uh, you know, Blue Sox this uh, last year uh, wasn't this close in a playoff race or anything like that, a new year. and a new mindset, obviously, and a lot of these guys, you know, knowing that they haven't been there before and, and got a chance to do something special. Chad Roberts takes outside. Here's the 1-0. It's also outside. Uh, and then in the West, we got four teams within two and a half games of each other. Lafayette, Tara Haute, Danville, and Springfield. Quincy kind of out of the picture at, at 13 and 30. They're 11 games out. So the they're gonna, they would need a miracle to get back into it. Heavy fastball, swing and a miss from Roberts. It's two and one. Really, so if you look at it, one team out of 10 is pretty much out of the playoff race. That's it. Yeah, it's obviously super competitive. It has been all year, and obviously in both divisions, and that's a, a good sign. Another ball hit the left field. This one's sinking. Murphy going to try to get there, but it will land and be a two out single for Roberts. Good effort by Murphy, but he got a little bit of a late break on it because of the no, sun and just here. couldn't Number quite get there in time, but he was able to trap it and keep Roberts from trying to take second base. Yeah, and Murphy, uh, knowing full well he trapped it, uh, obviously, as you said, had a late break, tried to play it off, show it to the, <laughs> the umpires, trying to say that he caught it, but everyone obviously saw the ball hit the ground. Uh, but three balls hit the left field to start the game. Kyle Orloff will take a pitch a little bit low. Kyle peers over his shoulder and then comes home and a pop up on the infield here. Paven Parks has stumbled a little bit but recovers to make the catch for the final out. No runs a hit, no, no errors, and a man left. We'll go to the bottom half here, give you the Blue Sox lineup tonight. Brought to you by the Butler Armco Credit Union. It, leading off will be number 10, the left fielder Tanner Murphy, followed by the second baseman, number 22, Brady Gulikowski. In the three spot will be the right fielder, number eight, Calvin Scott. In the cleanup will be number 19, James Meeker, who plays third base tonight. First baseman, number 24, Christian Webb. Will bat fifth, followed by the DH, number 41, Patrick Ferguson. The catcher, number seven, Ray Gonzalez, will bat seventh, followed by number 13, shortstop, Paven Parks. And in the nine hole will be the center fielder, number 17, Ben Carew. And they will face from Marshall, Jacob Nickemeyer. And this is a guy we've seen quite a few times this summer, Kellen. Yeah, it's been uh, what, probably two or three times that I've seen him. Obviously, I think you've seen him once or twice more than I have um, this summer. And uh, Nigemeyer has, you know, it's kind of been up and down against the Sox. I think he pitched, uh, has pitched, you know, okay in a couple games and, you know, not so good in a couple. But, you know, he's been uh, he, he's been okay against the Blue Sox this year. And obviously, 
trying to, uh, you know, uh, get a W against the Sox tonight. He's 2-0 on in the summer with a 4.35 earned run average, nine, start, nine games, seven starts, 41 to third innings pitch, 29 strikeouts, 29 walks, 45 hits. Uh, against Butler, he, he started last week, uh, went five innings, three runs, all of them earned on six hits, four walks, five strikeouts, and then uh, his other start against Butler, he went four innings, allowed five runs on four hits, seven, or four, five runs, four earned on seven hits, two walks, and one strikeout. So he, yeah, but he's had some good outings too. He went eight and a third against Champion City, allowed just two runs on had seven strikeouts. Uh, Through seven innings of shutout ball against Champion City earlier this year with five strikeouts. And actually another op another time against Champion City through a couple innings, uh, shutout ball and picked up a win. So he's, he's had Champion City's number, yeah. but he has not had much luck against Butler so far this year. Pitch high to Murphy. It's funny, though, because he hasn't pitched that well against us, but he has not factored in a right. loss yeah, yet. Yeah, I was just about to say that. He hasn't gotten a loss, so he's done uh, all he needs to to keep his team in the game, obviously, to get a no decision. Um, you know, you're, you're keeping your team in it, and just kind of whoever's behind you kind of loses it for you. But, you know, uh, he, he's, he's pitched well enough to keep his team in the game so far. Blue Sox in the alternate Yankee uniforms tonight. You know, hard hit ball down the... Left field line, that's a fair ball, and that will at least be one. Murphy's on his way to second. He'll be there with a stand-up double to start it off here tonight in the bottom of the first. Smoked it right past the third baseman, Bollinger. Yeah, that was, uh, he was all over that pitch. He was all over the first one, uh, that, that last swing he took, too. Fouled it straight back. This time, didn't miss it, obviously, right down the line. That thing just kept rolling down that left field line. I thought the left fielder was going to cut it off, but it just kept rolling right almost to the wall. I think he got to the track. Yeah, defensively for Chillicothe, Ryan is behind home plate. Roberts at first, Peggs at second, Bollinger at third, Petru Petru Petrucci at short, Orloff in left, Lambert in center, Newsom in right, and Golikowski's going to hit it to the center, sinking liner right at Lambert, and he makes the catch for the first out. Yeah, and Golikowski... Right on the button. Uh, I mean, he hit, they hit that ball pretty hard, just right at right at the center fielder Lambert, and it's an easy play for Lambert. But uh, Gulakowski's got to feel good about that out. He hit that ball right on the screws. Good to see him back in the lineup because mm -hmm. on uh, Sunday he left after a couple innings uh, with a little nagging injury, but uh, got the day off yesterday. He was able to. Get back, right back in the lineup. Today. He's a crucial part of this oh, yeah. lineup. Yeah, and he's he's uh, a great two hitter as well. You don't really think about that that much, but you know, having a good two hitter uh, behind a guy like Tanner Mo Murphy, who's on base a lot, um, obviously that that helps things out. And Gulakowski, a good situational hitter as well, can move him over. Calvin Scott with a little flare out in the shallow center. That's going to fall for a base hit, and runners are going to be on the corners here with just one out. Those. Uh, we've seen Calvin hit the ball hard at, at, for base hits. That one not as hard as one, but it was one that fouled no man's Hey, yeah, it goes, it goes down in the book as a screaming line drive. I mean, and Scott did his job, gets on base, and obviously would have probably liked to drive in Tanner Murphy there, but I'm sure he'll take it. Yeah, it just fell just in between Pegs and uh, Lambert. And we'll take a single, and now James Meeker who homered twice off of yeah. Niggemeyer last week. Nice pitch, Bender below the knees. Good take from Meeker for a ball. That's a good pitch to start, obviously, if you're Niggemeyer against the guy that's taking you deep twice in one game before. Might as well start him off with a breaker. There's a bouncer now. Oh, he just lost a handle on that yeah. one. But now you're sitting 2-0. Meager you got to be thinking he's going to get something here to drive. Yeah, that's what you're looking for. You're looking, you know, you got to be thinking fastball, obviously, 2 0. Definitely a hitter's count. Well, it's a pop up on the infield. Going back into foul territory is Bollinger. He's got it for the second out. That's, that's a tough one there. Uh, there's not much room over there, but it just found the, found the open space, and Bollinger makes the catch. Yeah, and that's a, uh, that's a gutsy pitch there uh, from Niggemeyer. And he's up 2-0, and it looked like a changeup. It looked like he took something off. Um, and Meeker was looking fastball, and tough to differentiate between fastball changeup when you're up 2-0, obviously. 
and he kind of got out on that front foot a little bit and popped it up. That's a good pitch from from Niggemeyer. Yeah, for for him, for Niggemeyer, that's a huge yeah, out. Huge. I mean, yep. you, you've given up a couple. Runner goes, the ball lined into the gap. That'll get down in left center and go towards the wall. It'll make it all the way there. Calvin Scott's around third. Murphy's already in to score. Webb has a double, and it's two to nothing. And that was a two-run double by number 24, Christian Webb. And our Butler Blue Sox now... Yeah, that'll do it. As, as, Cal, as, as Cal had said, right, right as soon as it left the bat. Yeah, that was a, that was a, uh, a shot there by Christian Webb in the gap, and actually ends up working out because Calvin Scott was off with the pitch, although he probably would have scored anyway uh, on a ball that rolled to the wall, but it made it a lot easier for him to go from first to third. Now, here's Patrick Ferguson. What's interesting about Patrick this summer is 44% of his hits have been home runs. But unfortunately, <laughs> on the other end of that, 48% of his at-bats have been strikeouts. So he's, he's kind of uh, he's, he's kind of had uh, e either uh, feast or famine here. Yeah. Yeah, it's, been, it's kind of the perfect way to describe it, uh, describe Ferguson so far this year. But I tell you what, uh, when he strikes out, he makes it look pretty majestic. I mean, he takes pretty big cut. I mean, it's, it's every time he's up, he's taking big cuts. I and mean, that's, that's a given at this point, obviously, with – you know what? Twelve home runs this year. Uh, that's that's a given. But you know, he, he we talked about this last time I was on. He's actually taken a lot more pitches. He's gotten a little bit more selective. He's starting to figure it out a little bit. Well, he takes one go. there. Yeah. Curveball for a ball. It's one and one or two and one. I beg your pardon. For, for, uh, Ferguson leads the league in home runs at thirteen. Thirteen home runs. I said twelve. Yeah. And the two one, he fouls it straight back. Uh, he finished second in the uh, home run derby last night down in Beckley for the showcase. He lost to Austin Norman in the final round, but he, I guess he put on a pretty good dis show, just like he he does here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've seen quite a few uh, moonshots here at, at Kelly Automotive Park, and obviously, I would have loved to see it what he would have did in the home run derby. Two two is a called strike three on the outside corner. And that will end the inning. But the Blue Sox do get two runs on a two two RBI double by Christian yeah, Webb, and they'll go. We'll go to the second, leading two nothing. Dalton Bollinger steps in. He's ready to go. Here in the top of the second with the Blue Sox leading 2 nothing. Connor Coward on the hill. Worked uh, well, one hit in the first inning, but he gets a fastball by Bollinger here. And that was a two-out single, and uh, he's uh, working the outfielder so <laughs> far. Murphy, a couple catches, and a pop-up on the infield as well. 
Ooh, good pitch there, and it's 0-2. Yeah, that's what Coward will do. Um, you know, normally he's a, a strikeout guy. I think the last time we saw him, he went seven innings and struck out 12. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously today pitching more to contact, at least it's been that way through the first four batters. They've all put it in play. Good 0-2 pitch there. He slid off the table, didn't get a chase. And now pitch misses for a ball. Bollinger comes in, hitting 296. He has 12 doubles, five homers, 16 RBI. A ground ball, pass. Gulikowski out into center field, a leadoff single. Right back up the box. Good two-strike approach there. Yep. Yeah, he didn't try to do too much there, did Bollinger. Just, you know, in that situation, you just want to put the ball in play. You don't want to go down by the way of the, of the strikeout. And Bollinger did a good job there staying on that pitch. And, and as you said, just taking it right up the box, right up the chute. And, and that's that's how you know you're right on it when you take it right up the middle. Tanner Picnic at the plate. We'll take a pitch high. Picnic hitting 279. As a team, the paints come in hitting 274, which is pretty respectable. But uh, they've had their struggles of late, just winning three of their last 10. 1 0. Popped up over top, her head's out of play. Uh, in comparison, Butler comes in tonight hitting 260, but they've won seven out of their last yeah. 10. It's crazy, crazy how that sort of thing works, obviously. You know, just. Uh, <laughs> That's baseball, though. That, that sums it up right there. Called strike here. One and two. Good pitch from Coward, who just went down the road. Seneca Valley High School, Zelianople, Pennsylvania, just outside of Cranberry. About half hour to the south. One, two. Chopper to third. Beaker will throw to second for one. On to first, and they will not turn the double play. A little bit of a slow turn by Meager, look, uh, might have just got stuck in his glove an extra second, but they get the important out, the one at second, and uh, take a fielder's choice here, one away. Yeah, it, was ca it wasn't all that hard hit either. Meager That's had true. to go uh, a couple steps ahead of him to make that play and kind of had to make a quick turn to get that ball to second base. But as you said, you know, take the fielder's choice there, get the lead runner out, and now um, you, know, you deal with the seven guy and basically the same situation. Yeah, Peyton Newsom. Pops it, or actually hits it straight back on a line. Some of the Blue Sox have really done a good job of raising their average as of oh late. Yeah. I mean, you got Tanner Murphy hitting 320. Gulikowski's up to 317. Mm -hmm. Meeker at 318. Calvin Scott hitting 283. Newsom is ready to go. And but Coward will throw it to first, diving back to the bag picnic. Pitch outside. Even to count one apiece. Newsom hitting 136, which is the lowest average on the Paints team. Foul ball hard hit straight back. He's close to being on that one. Yeah, he, he was right on that one. That's for sure. Didn't miss that one by a whole lot. Yeah, although Newsom, uh, he was a new acquisition. Yeah, he's only played well, six I, I games. I was going to say, it was like last week when he came in. I remember because you were saying he didn't have a, a number for him. Yeah. He, he, he wasn't even on the roster yet. One, two, oh, swing and a miss. Late swing from Newsom. He goes down via the strikeout. First K of the night for Coward. That was like one of those swings where I was like, no, I can't believe I just did that. Yeah, he, that was one of the, yeah, you're right. He, he, I don't know, he obviously wasn't looking for whatever he got, yeah. obviously. I, I think that was, had a, that was a fastball, I think, and he just flat out wasn't looking for it. And, you know, when you're looking for an off-speed pitch and get a fastball, nine times out of ten, you're not going to catch up to it. Brings in Michael Ryan, the catcher from Toledo. With two away and a runner on. Fastball right there for called strike. I mean, that was 
pretty much middle middle. Yeah, right down the middle there, and you know Coward has thrown a lot of strikes. Hasn't been behind really anybody so far tonight, and uh, you know, only two hits, uh, only three men to reach base uh, against him so far. Here's the 0-1. Ground ball to second. Gulikowski's got to throw to Webb in time to end the inning. The runs one hit, no errors, and one man left on base. We'll go to the bo bottom of the second. Butler two and Chillicothe nothing. Bottom of the second for the Blue Sox here. They lead 2 nothing after a two-run double by Webb in the first. Gonzalez, who is the hero of the last time the Blue Sox played here with a walk-off single with the bases loaded to right field. Parks and Carew will follow. And that was a heck of a ball game that last it time. Was. That was uh, one of the better games so far this year. That was top to bottom, I mean, that was awesome. And then Gonzalez comes up. I think he had two strikes on him, too. Yes, in that he did. bat and just slapped it the other way for the single. First pitch way high. Yeah, it's, it was neat to see because, you know, if he doesn't get a base hit there, then we got two outs. Yep. And then you, we had the base alone with nobody out, and it would have been dangerous to him pop up here. Pegs calling off everybody, makes the catch for the first out. Shortstop number 13, Pavin Parks. Pavin Parks started for the Blue Sox on Sunday out in Champion City. Went seven innings, allowed only three runs. Or two runs, I beg your pardon. Yeah, and Pavin's one of those two-way guys, obviously, for the Sox. And really, I mean, he's... He's done well all year, and when he's come in to pitch, hasn't really been called upon, you know, a ton. But when he has been pitching, he's been he's been pretty good, and obviously, he's been holding his end with the bat as well. He rips a grounder foul. Yeah, he comes in fourth in, uh, on the Blue Sox in average at uh, 275 or fifth. I beg your pardon. He has uh, three doubles, four triples, two homers. Another foul ball here. He's all over Niggemeyer to start this at bat. He's hit two ropes off him, although they just went, just rolled foul. Parks fouls another one off here. We headed to Kent State in the fall after playing a couple of years of junior college ball down in, um, down in, Florida, Seminole State. Another 0 2. That one's low. It's a good take there by Parks. He thought about taking a hack at that pitch at the ankles and obviously decided against it. Smart. Smart by Pave and Parks, and see if he can make an at-bat out of this. Obviously down 0-2. 
There's a one, two, oh, a ball it smoke to right that field, and that one is way oh. out of here. Parks for the solo bomb, it's three nothing. I said trying to make an at bat out of it. I didn't think he was gonna do that. I didn't think he was gonna hit a no doubt or a right fielder out there. He didn't even move. No. Peyton Newsom, I mean, he just stood there. I don't think anyone moved. I mean, that was a, a, an absolute liner out of here. I mean, that's, a, that's impressive, especially being down one, two like Parks was. To stay on that type of pitch, I mean, you gotta tip your cap. Yeah, Parks, it's his third homer of the summer. That was, as impressive as what is you'll see a uh, line out of here. I mean, it it only took maybe three seconds True. to fight its way over the fence. Yeah, that was that was absolutely smoked. That was a line drive. I mean, that wasn't any that wasn't a, a fly ball by any means. That was that was a line drive the whole way out. 1-0 low to Ben Carew, who hit a home run out in Champion City over the weekend. And, Gulikowski on that doubleheader day had three, yeah. three home runs in, 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 in two games. A line drive base hit out in the center field. Carew, oh. all the, wow. Lambert almost had that ball go by him out there in center, but he's able to single. cut it off. Seventeen, hold Carew to a single, but he's continues his tear. We talk about guys raising their average. Ben has been one that's been doing that over the last couple weeks. He's up to 246. At one point, he was under 200. Yeah. So he's coming around. He had red shirt this year. So mm -hmm. Those guys yeah. sometimes have a hard time of getting back you know, into it. Yeah. yeah. yeah not seeing any live pitching. And uh, he yeah. seems to be uh, turning, or turning around in the second half. Now Tanner Murphy's at the plate. Roped the single down the third base line, is, or double, I beg your pardon, the first time up. Yeah, and, and Carew there, uh, he might have had more. That ball took a weird hop in the outfield. That's kind of why we both kind of yeah. said, oh, he almost skipped past. Might have been, with Carew speed, might have been an inside the parker had that thing got past him. 0-2 oh, after a swing through by Murphy. Came around the score in the first. Three nothing Blue Sox here. Are over. Carew gets back. Niggemeyer, who's on the mound here tonight for Chilcot, he was actually drafted out of high school, decided to go to Ohio State instead, and then left there. And now is at Marshall. Swing and a foul tip that's held onto by Ryan. Second strikeout of the night for Niggemeyer. Yeah, and, and Murphy, I think he's trying to go the other way with that. It looked like he was feeding him uh, that way, and Murphy just Looked like he pulled off there at the last second and uh, results in a K, but obviously uh, the, the Sox have been hitting the ball around today thus far. Yep. Here's Brady Gulikowski. He takes a called strike. Kind of like what happened the last time they came here yeah. uh, with, when Niggemeyer was on the hill. Uh, uh, Meeker hit a two run homer in the first. Every out seemed like it was a loud out. Mm -hmm. And then in the middle part of the game, he kind of settled down. Then in the fifth, they got back to him again. So see how it transpires here tonight. Little Kowski was a little chopper. That'll go foul on the first base side. One, two, two outs. Gulikowski takes inside. Pretty good pitch. Started out in the zone and curled its way towards Gulikowski. That's not the easiest pitch to no. lay off when it's running up in on you. Yeah, no doubt about it. And a good job, as you said, by Gulikowski to lay off and not an easy thing to do there. 2-2 two -two ground ball. Oh. Nice stop by Pegs at second throw to wow. first in time to Rob Gulikowski and end the inning. Excellent defense from Drake Pegs to end it, but the Blue Sox do get one on two hits. No errors and leave a man on base. Paven Park solo homer has the Blue Sox up three nothing. So we head to the third. It's time for each and every one of us to face a very troubling fact. 
There exists a significant heroin and opioid epidemic in not only Butler County, but elsewhere across the country. I'm Rich Goldinger, the District Attorney of Butler County. This is my backyard and yours too. Together, we can work to eradicate the high-level drug dealers that supply these drugs to those using them. Heroin and opioid abuse does not discriminate. Users come from all economic backgrounds, are male and female, and may be teenagers or middle-aged adults. With your help and in conjunction with the Butler County Drug Task Force and the Pennsylvania Office of Attorney General, we can target those dealers who bring this poison into our county. Please report any suspicious activity to your local law enforcement agency, the Pennsylvania State Police, or to my office. This is our ballpark. This is our county. This is our backyard. Let's all say, not in my backyard. Please enjoy tonight's Blue Sox game. Top of the third here in Butler. Blue Sox ahead, three to nothing. Pegs will lead off the inning. He made a great play in the field to end the second. Robin Gulikowski have a base hit. That would have put runners at the corners too for how, uh, you know, that ball was hitting that in the hole over there and that ball wasn't hit all that hard, but that scoots past Pegs and you're looking at first and third with two outs. Coward's first pitch is fouled in the general mission. Here comes, look out. Did uh, Jacob Chilcott, the announcer over there, getting some action that we <laughs> normally get. Yeah. And a fan, a little young fan grabs the ball, holds it up, gets a nice round of applause. Here's the 0-1. Foul ball in between the legs. Wow. Trick shots here. <laughs> yeah, one off of the back of general mission, comes back in, then one between my legs. Probably couldn't do that again if he tried. I wouldn't want to try it. Twice. No, 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 absolutely not. Because if it's a little miscalculated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're going to be down for a little while. Writhing in pain. 0 2, another foul ball. Look out, it's general mission again. Pegs trying to scare the locals. Yeah. Young fan gets it. See if he gets a round of applause. Yes, he hey. does. He's happy. 0 2 again. Pegs takes low. The most uneventful pitch of this at bat. Yeah, Pegs, uh, he's extended the strike zone a little bit. You can tell. I don't know if you could see it on, on the TV, but uh, he's choked way up on that bat. He's probably choked up a good two, three inches. He swings and misses. Swings through it. Gonzalez going to have to throw down to first, and he'll do so Ooh. to get the out. It was close, though. Pegs busting it up the line. Second K for Coward. And there's one away here in the third. Yeah, and uh, Pegs, as you said, busting it down there, almost got there. I mean, Ray Gonzalez, he had to fire that thing. He had to un uncork a, a missile down there to get him. I mean, Pegs was probably more than, ha than halfway down there by the time uh, Gonzalez got to that ball and still threw him out. Got him by a step or maybe even only a half step. Swing and miss from Lambert. Good off-speed offering from Coward. You can tell he was geared up for something heavy. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and he had to try to slow his swing down and really just, you know, Coward just kind of made him look silly there. Yeah. Foul tip here, and it's 0-2. And, Coward looks loosened up out there. And here's his 0-2 outside off of Gonzalez's mitt. Good crowd for Tuesday. Kids run the bases tonight. Tomorrow, we got dollar dogs. Yeah. Leave your pets at home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pop up into shallow center field. And coming in is Carew. He's got it for the second out. Now batting for the base, number four, the shortstop, Chris Petrucci. Chris Petrucci. He's at the plate. With two down. And so far on the summer. Watch the called strike. He's hitting 233. He had 133 at bats. 
the 38 games coming into tonight. Here's the 0-1. Curveball, bounced to third. Oh. Meeker had trouble with the sun, recovers, throws the first and retires. Petrucci to end the inning. And now, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, that wasn't an easy play, obviously. You can tell by the way Meeker reacted. The ball went kind of straight up off the ground. Had to get right in the sun. I mean, the sun's at its, its spot where it's kind of uh, uh, right in your face, and he had a little trouble with it. One, two, three, go to the paints in the third. We'll go to the bottom half. Butler, three, and Jilakothi, nothing. Scott. Bottom of the third here in Butler, where it is steamy. Yeah. And the bats of the Blue Sox have come through to this point. Three nothing score in favor of the home team. Five hits so far for Butler, two for Chillicothe. And Calvin Scott's ready to go. He'll take a nice breaker for a called strike. That's a good start there for Niggemeyer, dropping that deuce right over the heart of the plate. And obviously, Calvin Scott wasn't looking for that. Yeah. Goes with a fastball outside here. Scott with a, see a Rick Flair single to <laughs> shallow right <laughs> center his first time up. Woo, yeah, that's right, right. there we go, the nature boy. I love that reference. It's good stuff. 2-1. Hit hard. This one's a much uh, more traditional single out into center field. And that makes Scott two for two here tonight. Boy, uh, the last one it was a looper that just kind of fouled no man's land. This one right on the button up yeah. the middle. Yeah, I have no doubt about it. And, and Scott, uh, you know, regardless, he's two for two tonight. And that one uh, was hit pretty well, obviously. Didn't, didn't miss that one at all, right on the screws. Games Meeker. Popped it out in foul territory. First time up. Runner bluffs, and Scott will head back to first. I thought he had a good jump there. He just must have been a straight bluff. I mean, he he uh, looked like he, he was going on first movement, and normally that's what he does. He goes on first movement. Uh, talked about his prowess for stealing bases. He's got 24 in the summer. Meeker that's, with a line down. shot to right center. That's down. And it will bounce off the Walmart sign out there. Scott is going to be waved home. Meeker is at second. Scott will score. It's 4-0 on an RBI double by James Meeker. And that was an RBI double by 19. James, the Meeker will inherit the earth. Oh, dear Lord. What a nice, <laughs> what a nice piece of hit by Meeker out there. And, Getting that ball out in the right center, just uh, took the first pitch he saw and yeah, took uh, advantage of it. Yeah, Meeker, uh, I mean, he's done that all summer. Uh, he really has. And then, you know, he's had Niggemeyer's number, that's for sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. Two, num two homers off him in the last ball game against him. And today, uh, one for two with a RBI double. That's, a, that's pretty good. Christian Webb takes high. Ball bounces off of Ryan Smith, but will stay close enough that Meeker, who thought about going to third, retreats. And I'm going to say that was a cross-up just based on Ryan's reaction. Yeah. He, he might have been looking curveball there and got a fastball or, or vice versa. Just the way that ball, you know, kind of ejected out of his mitt there. It, I don't know. That was, that was kind of weird. Then he goes right out and 
you know, has to get re go over signs. It could be with the guy at second, too. They just yeah. crossed up. Pitch low and away. Yeah. Just gets, you know, get confused on what pitch you're going on. Obviously, you know, maybe uh, Nigemeyer just kind of forgot. You know, that happens sometimes as well. 2 0 taking all the way is Webb, but he gets a called strike. And and what? Webb, uh, Webb hit that hit the ball hard last time he was up and see if he can do it again. Takes called strike two on a fastball that lived on the outer half. Yeah, and Webb uh, looking back at home plate umpire Gary Proper asking him if that if that was the corner probably. Proper said absolutely. Two two is right there for strike three. That was pretty much the same pitch and Webb goes down on strikes. There's one away. And Webb obviously didn't like the call. It looked like basically all of them were, were in the same spot, more or less. I mean, if they weren't, they wasn't off by a whole lot, put it that way. Here's Ferguson. Called out on strikes his first time up. Three Ks now for Nigemeyer. Somebody asking for a home run and fouls it into the net. <laughs> it's not that easy. You may look like, make it look easy at times. It's but not. Yeah, it's definitely not. Trust me. I know from experience when I was uh, playing college baseball as a freshman, my first collegiate at bat, I hit a home run. I never hit another one in college. So that uh, really? Kinda, yeah. Kind of puts it in perspective that. for you. It's not an easy thing to do. You probably, at that time, you were probably like, well. Uh, I'm going yeah. to hit 100, man, you know. Oh, but, yeah. yeah. That's a little known fact. That's kind of cool, but obviously it's not easy. I mean, Ferguson obviously does make it look pretty easy. Ooh. Oh, two curveball called strike three. That one looked a little bit low. I can understand Ferguson's frustration now, with that call, the but yep. there's two away. Gonzalez. Yeah, and, and yeah, that's a good pitch, though, by, by Nigemeyer, regardless of whether it was low or not. Um, I mean, that's exactly where you want to throw a ball. 0-2 uh, to a guy like Ferguson. You don't want to throw anything. You don't want to throw anything real close by any means. And obviously right there drops a, a breaker off that look, looked low but gets the call, gets the benefit of a, of a call. Foul tipped by Ray Gonzalez. Popped out on the infield in the second inning. Ray hitting 253. Takes a called strike. Oh, man. And Ray Gonzalez didn't like that. Look a little high. Yeah. You get a strike, and you get a strike. <laughs> yeah, it's been that way. <laughs> they the, tonight. Yeah. You give it out yeah. strikes. It's been that way the last inning, that's it's, for sure. I'd be fine with it if it's like that on both sides. There's called strike three, and... All of a sudden, the strike zone opens up, and uh, Nigemeyer strikes out the side. But the Blue Sox do score for the third consecutive inning. And they'll leave one here. We'll go to the fourth with Butler leading 4 nothing.
Chad Roberts, who has one of the two paints hits to this point, leads off to begin the fourth. Butler ahead, 4-0. And ball hit the center field. Carew is underneath it. I thought for a second he didn't see it, but it just came right to him. And he makes the catch for the first out. One pitch, one away. Yeah, and, and he didn't have to move a whole lot out there. That's probably a good thing, because I yeah. do not think he saw it right Right away, I, I think you're right, Carew instantly putting his glove up. Normally you kind of see guys like wait until the ball starts coming down. But as soon as that ball was hit, he had his glove up, shielding his eyes from the sun, and uh, maybe had to take a half a step to catch it. Foul ball straight back by Orloff. We didn't see him uh, much at all in those four games that Chillicothe played here last week. I think he had one pinch hit appearance in the, in the entire uh, stand. 0-1 oh, from Coward it is high and away. Orloff popped out to Paven Parks in the first inning. 1-1, one, one. foul tip oh. off of Gonzalez. He doesn't seem to be any worse for it. No, I think that caught him right in the in the chest protector. That's that's a good thing. Yeah, that, those sting obviously when it gets you in with no padding. And I thought maybe it got him on on the thigh, but obviously not. He would have been, trust me, he would have taken a moment for for that. One two swing and a miss. Strike three, and. There's two away. Coward now with three strikeouts. That one was pure heat. Yeah. Yeah, he went right after him. There did Coward. And again, he's just thrown strikes tonight. I mean, he hasn't been behind anyone, really. And if he has, he's worked back quickly to, to get ahead. Bollinger at the plate. Swings and misses. The guy broke a nice... Uh, Look like maybe a late curve or, or a slider, whatever it was, it was you had Bollinger way out in the yeah. front. Yeah, it was a, a very nice pitch to start this at bat off. Now he comes back with a fastball, gets him to swing through it. And Coward. Yeah, don't don't go to his black jack table because this no. guy is dealing. Yeah. No, no doubt about that. O2 popped into right field. That's gonna hook foul. Calvin Scott giving it a look, but it will land out of play. And I don't think that's where Coward wanted that pitch. I don't, it might have been a fastball, but it didn't seem like it had the zip on it that the last one had. It might have been an off-speed pitch and kind of left it up. You don't want to leave you know, an off-speed pitch up to a big guy like Bollinger. Time called. And here's the 0-2 again. It's to the backstop. That's okay when there's nobody on in two yeah. outs. You can afford to do that. Yep. Here's the pitch. It's swing and a miss. Oh, dirty, dirty slider. And Bollinger. Falls victim to end the inning. And that's now eight in a row that Connor Coward is set down. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth, Butler four, and Chillicothe nothing.
Paven Parks, who sent one into the parking lot his last time up, will lead off to begin the bottom of the fourth with Butler leading four to nothing. Blue Sox with seven hits, Chillicothe with two no errors on either side. Ningemeyer's ready to go. Parks takes high. The home run was Pavin's fourth of the summer. Pavin, a native of Uniontown, Ohio. Pops this one up into right field. Newsom waiting for it to come down, and he's got it for the first out. Just got underneath that one a little bit after line driving one out of here his first time up, but with one away, Ben Carew will step in. He's singled in the second inning. Right back up the middle. We'll take a called strike here. Called strike now, 0-2 on Carew. Well, Kellen and I are waiting for the sun to go down. It's directly <laughs> behind us, and it's just, I feel like we're baking here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, a lot of sweat going on. Yeah. And uh, it just it just won't cooperate. I just felt the back of my chair, and it feels like it's about, it might be melting. Yeah, yeah that's why I'm keeping my back away from the back of this thing. 1-2, ground ball to second. Pegs has it. Throw to Roberts. We'll get Carew by a step. Two away. And a good job by Carew. Busting it down the line there. Now batting, number 10, and um, 10, Pegs had to uncork a, a strong throw to get him there. I mean, Peg, Pegs, had, he didn't lob that ball over there by any stretch. And a good job by Ben Carew hustling that thing out. Tanner Murphy doubled and scored in the first inning and fell victim to the strikeout in the second. Yeah, try to get things going with two outs, and then he'll That'll do just work. that. Line drive single out in the left field. Orlov gets it in, and Murphy is two for three. And, and Murphy has team been team on team uh, two pitches tonight. I mean, he's really been all over it all night, other than the strikeout, obviously, but a double and single to his credit, and we're just not even through four innings yet. Gulikowski 0 for two, but he's hit, hit the ball hard twice. Robbed of a base hit yep. his last time up. Lukowski grounds one to second. Pegs bobbles it. And it will be an E4. And Gulikowski's on with two outs. That brings up Calvin Scott, who's two for two. That's a tough play for Pegs. I think he was in, indecisive there. He wanted, wanted to go to second and then took his eye off the ball for a second. And then the next thing you know, it, it's And an I error. think what would help that too was that Murphy kind of bananaed around the ball a little bit. He, he purposely kind of blocked the ball away from the fielder, and you're allowed to do it as long as it doesn't hit you. Yeah. Uh, or you make it super intentional where you, you know, kind of stop in front of it, things like that. But Like uh, A-Rod a couple years ago when yeah. he yelled at the guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to third base. Yeah. <laughs> but no, Murphy did a good job there blocking, um, blocking the view, it looked like of pegs and, and pegs i don't know if the ball skipped up on him last minute or what but results in a runner on well, calvin scott will look to make the paints pay for that error he's ahead 1-0 here's the pitch scott takes to call a ball it oh, looked wow. good well yeah i thought that was definitely gonna might be a been, strike might have been a bit a bit, a bit too high i guess maybe it broke late i don't know yeah anyway it's 2-0 this is a good Hitters count, obviously. Here's the pitch, and it's inside. Throw to second, and Niggemeyer oh. sn snapped it out of the air. I don't know how he did that. <laughs> that that was definitely going to second base, and he, he decided, that's nah, fine. Yeah, he just snapped <laughs> he it. Just, he just gave the my bad. They would have had a chance at Murphy, too. It, it would have, definitely. They had the play on, and uh, Ryan kind of made the face, like, why'd you catch that? A ball hit to right center. Lambert chasing it. Neither one's going to get there. Newsom has it fallen between them. Murphy's around third. He'll score. Gulikowski's at third. An RBI single for Calvin Scott makes it five to nothing. 
That air does come back to haunt him. Yeah, it does. And I don't know if it was a miscommunication out in the outfield or what, but that ball was up there for a while. And then it looked like it looked like the right fielder out there, Newsom, was going to catch it, and it just dropped right in front of him. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I mean, they're playing. They're giving Calvin Scott a huge gap the other way. And Newsom, I don't know, the ball just fell right in front of him. Yeah, well, we'll yeah. I don't know if he just didn't get a good read on it or what, but that makes nine hits for the Blue Sox already here tonight. And here's James Meeker with runners on the corners and two away. The RBI double his last time up. See if Scott takes off here. Here's the pitch. It's a bouncer. Nice block by Ryan, though. He's solid behind the plate. Yeah, definitely. He's got a good arm, too. He just showed that off, yeah. and I'm sure... He showed uh, hey. Meyer's hand that. Yeah. He's got a cannon back there. Yeah, a comedy of errors this inning yeah. for, for uh, Chillicothe. They could have had three outs twice. Yeah. I think they would have legitimately had a play on I Murphy. He I was way off the bag. I do, too. And Meyer just said, uh, whoops. Yeah, yeah, he just, I think it was more, I don't know if he realized the play was on and he thought the ball was going to hit him, so it was like self-defense, but regardless. Two all, oh, ball hit the left field, racing after it and making a Diving catch wow. out there is Orloff to end the inning. Boy, he did a couple of tumbles, but he held on to the ball, and that'll end it. Nice job by Orloff in left, especially with the sun beating out, down on him. But the Blue Sox score for the fourth straight inning. One run on two hits, one error, and two men left stranded. We'll go to the fifth, Butler five, and Chillicothe nothing. Thursday because that means it's Thirsty Thursday. Come out to Kelly Automotive Park each Thursday to support your favorite hometown team, the Butler Blue Sox, and enjoy our special concession prices, including $1 draft beers and 50 cent pops. Tickets start at just $7 and can be purchased online at butlerbluesox.net and or by phone at 724-256-9994. Let's go Blue Sox. Connor Coward just finishes up with his warm-up pitches. We're ready to play the fifth. And the Blue Sox enjoying a 5-0 lead on the back of nine hits. A uh, homer by Pavin Parks. We have scored in each inning. Uh, helped out last inning by an error, but for the most part, they've been able to use the bats effectively. Yeah, no doubt. And, and the pitching on the back end has been fantastic uh, for Coward and really hasn't allowed many base runners at all, only... Three men have been able to reach base, and one was by a fielder's choice, so he got an out out of it. Uh, so Coward has been great. The bats have been great so far tonight, and that makes for a good recipe, that's for sure. 2-0 here. The man who did reach on a fielder's choice is Picnic. He's at the plate. DH here tonight. Catches as well. Here's a 2-0 fastball. <laughs> Whew. A little smoke show, a little vapor trail coming off of that thing. And he slew, yeah. swings right through it. Yeah, and Picnic, uh, that's a healthy 2-0 swing, that's for sure. Uh, I mean, he knows. Strength strength on strength. Yeah, definitely. He knows. And that's a shot there, yeah. too. Ball hit out into right field. A leadoff single for Picnic. But, uh, yeah, that one before that, that was just, here's I mean, my fastball. Good luck. Yeah, definitely. And that's good confidence by Coward to do that, obviously. Uh, he's up. 2-0, and he's got to feed one in there. He's got to throw a strike, and uh, Picnic knew it. He took a hack at it, and then there comes back with a fastball, and, and Picnic rips it the other way. Yeah, he, he stayed back on that one, was able to get it out into right field, and now Newsom at the plate. He struck out swinging. Oh boy. You know, he's going to smash one to deep right center. Forget about this one. It wow. is gone. It's now 5-2, to two, a two-run bomb by Peyton Newsom. 
Whew. Yeah, that ball was, uh, I thought the ball that Picnic hit was, was hit was hit hard. My goodness, uh, Peyton Newsom absolutely crushed that thing. And there was really no doubt about that one either. I mean, it looked like from the get-go that that thing was going to get out of here. And it definitely looked like Calvin Scott and Ben Carew knew it, the only two men that would have had a remote chance at it. They didn't even move. Newsom's first home run of the, of the summer. He's, uh, of course, this is only his seventh game, but he goes oppo. And it makes it a 5-2 game. First pitch to Ryan is high. Now Connor will go to the Rosenbach. He's kind of had a little bit of a struggle here yeah. in this uh, top of the fifth after cruising, retiring eight straight. Oh, Ooh, now he comes back with that. <laughs> I don't know if that's a slider or, or just a changeup, but whatever it was, it know. drops off at the end and, and made Ryan kind of look foolish. Here's the 1-1. One -one. It bounces off of Ray Gonzalez's mitt. Yeah, I, I think that may have been a strike had Gonzalez caught it. And he's had that struggle a couple times, and it happened once earlier as well. And Gonzalez not happy with himself, obviously. Here's a 2-1. That's a fastball that's Ooh. below the knees. It's a good, good spot. Yeah, very good location. But now it's 3-1. Yeah. And and this is the eight hitter. You got to come after this guy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Bottom of the order, uh, six and seven have both uh, made an impact in this inning. And if you're a coward, you got to try to get this guy. Well, he gets a pop up on the infield. Webb's giving it a look in foul territory. I heard it. He caught it. He did uh, yeah. catch it. How about I that? I heard a glove. Yeah. I can't, you know, obviously we're blocked off, but a good job no, by no, Webb no, not to give it. up on that it's thing. I think that might be one of the first ones this year that have been straight up and, I mean, Somehow, don't get in the bleachers. I mean, nine times out of ten, that ball finds its way into the bleachers. Yeah, one away on a foul out, and here's Peggs, who struck out swinging in the third inning. And it's 5-2 now after a two-run bomb by Newsom, but the Blue Sox still have a cushion. Coward just got to reset here and uh, do what he's been doing most of the night. He gets a ground ball up the first base line, fielded by Webb, three unassisted, two away. Yep, that's exactly what the doctor ordered there, one pitch in and out uh, to Pegs. And, you know, uh, if you're a coward, you just got to put that, you know, I'm sure he's not thinking about it at the moment, but you got to put that two-run homer behind you, obviously. You still have a three-run lead, and, and with one swing of the bat, yeah, they cut the run down, the, the lead down, I should say, but, um, you know, you just got to shake it off, keep moving forward, and do what you've done for the first four, now he has, after the home run, he's got two two in a row out. Well, Lambert, the leadoff hitter, is 0 for two. Tried to check his swing. They will appeal down to first. No swing. His ball one. That's good call. He barely uh, went around. He didn't really come that close going around on that one. You might as well check it, though, if you're Egg Gonzalez. Nothing wrong with asking. Here's the 1-0. Swing and a miss on a heavy fastball. Actually pulled his top hand off. Whew. Didn't feel that heat all the way up here. That might just be the sun, though. <laughs> I think it's the sun. <laughs> Here's the 1-1. One, one. It's low. We've been so used to cloud cover here. I know, yeah. Even when the sun's been out, I don't think it's been this bad. 2-1. Oof. Wow. Bit low. Not getting, uh, not getting the calls right now, although... Um, we saw earlier the strike zone expanded. Now it seems like it's it's like a rubber band. It's a, it's coming back in. Mm -hmm. Three one swing and a miss. He got him to chase a pitch way out of the zone and low. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm sure that's what Coward is saying to Lambert right now. Would have been a walk, um, and instead he chases it and now a three two pitch coming. 3-2, called, a strike three. Lambert throws his bat to the dugout, thinking he's going to head down to first, but he'll have to follow his bat right to the dugout to end the inning. And, well, the Paints do get two runs on two hits, no errors, and no one left on base. A two-run homer by Newsom cuts the Blue Sox lead to 5-2 as we head to the bottom of the fifth.
Christian Webb at the plate as we play the bottom of the fifth. Ferguson on deck and then Gonzalez will follow. Blue Sox leading five to two, one one count here. One one, he's called a strike. Here's Bitch, chopper up the middle, fielded by the shortstop Petrucci. He'll throw to first, and Webb is retired for the first out. A good job by Niggemeyer to come out and after your uh, offense gives you a couple runs uh, of support. You can go out and get the first guy out on uh, four pitches. That's a, good, uh, that's a good formula, but as you said, Jaron, we're off air. You called a Ferg bomb right here. Well, we'll see. We'll see if, if your prediction comes true. Yeah, he's due. He is due. He hasn't, uh, he's 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. Yeah, oh, there my it is. goodness. There it is. <laughs> Holy cow, he just smashed it way out of here. And it's now 6 to 2. I'm glad you said that. Predictions sometimes do come true as Ferguson absolutely murders that ball. Hey man, oh jeez, 14th over the summer. Six away now from the Prospect League record. And now it's getting a lot closer, isn't it? Uh, when we, when he broke the uh, Blue Sox record, you mentioned it. He said, you know, the league record's 20. He said, ah, I'm not gonna get that, but he's getting closer. Yeah, well. He, that, that was, oh my, that was way, it was, not only was it way out of here, it was up above the lights. Yeah. It was just a, oh, that was uh, just ridiculous. That was one of his patented moonshots. Yes, I mean that was. If there was clouds, scorched. it probably would have brought down rain. Yeah, no doubt about it. Here is Gonzalez, pops it up, and then will make it out of the stadium. <laughs> I just uh, I marvel at the power that he has. If it, if it, like that would have been like an upper decker. Yeah, I, I mean, and in every park in America, that would have been an upper decker. No doubt about it. It's hard to tell at a minor league stadium, but if you look at the stadium lights, uh, like in the background of the screen, it was up above them yeah. as, as it left the park. I mean, that <laughs> ball might have made it in the river at PNC Park. There's a line drive single by Gonzalez out in the left field. And that makes it now 11 hits the on the night for the Blue Sox. Well, we're at it. We might as well take a trip around the Prospect League. Uh, Terre Haute 2, Quincy nothing in the top of the first. So Terre Haute jumping out quickly on, on the hapless Quincy Gems. 2-1, West Virginia over Champion City in the top of the third down in Beckley. 6 nothing, Lafayette leads Kokomo in the top of the third. And Danville leads Springfield 1-0 in the bottom of the first. We got a pitching... Uh, change possibly coming up here? I believe so. Uh, the assistant Indeed. coach yep. lifted his hat to the man in the bullpen. No Don't know who that is. We'll see Indeed. when he gets out of here. Niggemeyer's night is done. And we'll see who they bring in here. We'll get you a line on Niggemeyer here real quick. He, he only threw... 74 pitches tonight, but uh, just wasn't effective. And he, he he goes four to third, allowed 11 hits. Currently on the the hook for six runs, but he's responsible for Ray Gonzalez. Five earned runs, uh, no walks, five strikeouts. So they say walks are, are, are be hits are better than walks, but when you yeah. give up 11 in four and a third, That's it's not better. yeah, it's no. just no, it's not. No, and you know. Um, you know, Niggemeyer just, he threw strikes. He did what he was supposed to do, but now the Blue Sox bats just obviously <laughs> scoring run in every inning so far. Uh, they've come alive. I believe that's uh, number 37. Is that what that's? I, they don't have a 37. Yes. 37. Okay, it's number 99. Oh, no, it just changed. Okay, so it was 99 on the, we all obviously know it's not 99 because uh, that's what everybody's number is when they first get it. But Ross Thompson from Capital University will make his paints debut here. 
Just signed over the weekend. Thompson is a six foot three right, or I'm sorry, five eleven right hander, 165 pounds, a freshman from Wadsworth, Ohio, and he goes to Capital University, as I mentioned. I'm not familiar with that school. That's a rarity for me. I've never heard. I, I mean, that's a very generic. That's like one of those schools you see in a movie, mm -hmm. like you know, like. <laughs> like uh, like and remember the Titans or yeah. something. They play Capital High School. <laughs> so we're gonna use old our friends at Google here to find out what Capital University. Is. Maybe it'll get there. <laughs> Pavin Parks is in, and he'll be the first guy to face. Thompson, Capital University, is in Columbus, Ohio. It's only got uh, 2,700 students, so it's a small private college in, in uh, Columbus. I'm guessing that's NAIA ball, but I'm not sure. We'll find out here in a minute. Paven Parks will watch the first pitch dip out of the zone. Definitely a different look with yeah. Thompson on the, on the hill. Six to two Butler. Here's the pitch. It's a fastball. It's a called strike. They're a Division three school. And they, uh, their main rival is Otterbein University, which is another one that I've never heard of. They're known as the Crusaders. Pitch low to Parks. It's probably similar to... Uh, like in Pittsburgh, you got CMU and yeah, um, right. uh, Point Park. Of course, they're in NAIA, but I guess that'd be uh, more similar to the uh, school you went to. Yeah, to Westminster, Westminster probably. Yeah, it's probably. I've heard of Otterbein before, though, so I don't. But, yeah, I never really. I've heard of Capital before, obviously. We both have, and it's a rarity, <laughs> as you said. Park swings yeah. through the pitch. It's two and two now. It parks a little behind that, trying to take a big hack. Obviously, after hitting that home run in the second inning, taking a big swing there, coming up short. Let's see if we can get some school ball numbers on Thompson here in a minute. Pitch outside. Now it's a full count with Gonzalez at first, one away. You send uh, Ray here, 3 2. Well, I think so. I mean, with Pavin Parks up, he's a guy that normally puts the ball in play. It doesn't strike out a ton. Uh, so you might work your way into a hit and run here as well. It might not be called, but you might find yourself in one. Here's a 3-2. Ground ball foul down the first baseline. They didn't send Ray there, but wouldn't be surprised. You know, again, same count. You might see one here. Although... Doesn't look like Cody Harold's giving any signs over there at third base. Kind of just, kind of just staring at him. Yep. Maybe he's uh, well, he's gonna stay put. Parks fouls another one off to stay alive. Another payoff coming up to Paven. He already has a home run here tonight. Here's 3-2. Check, swing, called. Strike three. And that's the second out. Yeah, and Paven didn't like that call there. Thought it was on the outer half. <laughs> but got to live with it. And he uh, goes down by way of the K. And we'll see if Ben Carew can... Add to the hitting parade. Yeah, Ben Crew one for two tonight, singled in the second inning. Watch the curveball miss outside. One out, popped up, out of play. Mm 
Gonzalez at first, 1-1 one, one count. But Blue Sox up six to two, 11 hits on the evening. And a little ground ball that eats up pegs at second base. Oh my, it took a wicked hop on him and he just, he couldn't handle it. And that's gonna be his second error of the night. And you know, you almost, you know, when balls are hit like that, that are, that are kind of like nubbers off the end of the bat, uh, things like that, you almost expect, especially on turf, a ball to take a hop like that. And I mean, Pegs was set up perfectly for it. It just looked like it took a wicked hop on him. He did all he could to try to keep it in front of him, but just, uh, just unfortunate bounce there. Second error on charge to him tonight. Now that extends the inning for Tanner Murphy, who's two for three. And here's the pitch. Good curveball, got him way out in front. Yeah, Murphy, obviously looking fastball. Gets a nice breaker from Thompson. Obviously way out in front. Here's the 0-1. Ground ball to shortstop. Pertucci has it. He'll go to the short way to Pegs and Ooh. just get crew to end the inning. Let the Blue Sox do score another run on a solo homer by Patrick Ferguson and we'll go to the sixth. It's Butler six and Chillicothe two. Top of the six here. And we got a defensive change. Damian Maglione will come in for Brady Gulikowski. And Brady was dealing with a little bit of a nagging injury. He got a nice 6-2 lead here. So he'll he'll sit out the rest yeah. of tonight. Maglione very good with the glove. Yes. He's been hitting the ball well. Lately has Maglione too. Yes, he has. Uh, for First pitch of the strike to Petrucci. O one is above the belt. Is this the Big Mac inning? I didn't hear Jay announce it. Yeah. It might be though. I I could be wrong, but we'll see here in a minute if we get to two strikes. Yes. One one. Ground oh, ball to second. Maglione has it. The throw to first in time. One away. Maybe it's another inning. It's usually the sixth though. Yeah, see either the sixth or you do it the, like the second and third sometimes too. Well, here's Chad Roberts. He's one for two, singled in the first, and then flew out to Ben Crew in center field in the fourth. Left-handed hitting bat, which is kind of a rarity for this offense. They only have two guys 
in the lineup right now, hitting left-handed. Lambert and Roberts. Yeah, and Roberts has. Oh, and Pegs too in the nine hole. Yeah, Pegs. Yeah. We have four hits to their credit so far, and Roberts has one. Ground ball to first. Nice job by Webb to backhand it, and he'll flip to Coward. Three one, and there are two away here quickly. Yeah, and Coward. Uh, this is a good response inning after giving up that two run shot uh, to to Peyton Newsom. He's gotten the next five men out that he's seen after the homer. Yeah, and now Orloff, who's 0 for 2 tonight, will step in with two outs. He goes to the University of Indianapolis. Foul Ooh. tip off of Gonzalez. He says he's all right. Again, I think he's, he's getting some lucky breaks tonight yeah. back there. Is Living Gonzalez. right. Yeah, he's getting it off the padding. That's where you want to get hit, that's for sure. And he's been He's had a couple where may or may have not been able to do that, but so far... He has. Oh, line <laughs> drive right to Meeker, and he catches it for the final out. It's a good thing that wasn't earlier in the game because he probably would have never saw no, it. It would have went right past him, probably. Or hit him, one yeah, of the two. It probably would have hit him. Yeah. Well, one, two, three, go to the paints here in the six. Bottom half coming up. Butler six, Chillicothe two. Maglione. Damian Maglione will lead off here, get his first at bat of the night as we play the bottom of the six, Butler six, Chillicothe two. 11 hits for Butler, four for Chillicothe, two errors for the Paints, and none for the Blue Sox. Maglione with the first pitch swinging, he grounds the third, the throw across from Bollinger's in time. 5 3 goes Maglione, and there's one away. Now eight. Yeah, and that's uh, a good start for Ross Thompson. It's the first man out of this inning that he sees and had some tough luck there in the <laughs> in the end of the fifth. He had that error and then got out of the inning with a, a fielder's choice, but got a little hairy there for him. Brings up Calvin Scott. They're facing Ross Thompson. And we got some numbers on him from school. Uh, Ross... Uh, Appeared in nine games, three starts, 22 and two-thirds innings, 34 hits, 18 runs, 15 earned, seven walks, 11 strikeouts. He gave up eight doubles. Uh, opponents hit 343 against him in, in, in his freshman season with uh, the Capitol. 0-2 count on uh, Calvin Scott here. And here's the pitch. Scott fouls it straight back. And Scott working on an impressive night. He's three for three with an RBI to his credit. Three singles to his credit, trying to add to that total and add to the 11 hits that Butler has already tallied tonight. It's been a pretty good night across the board. Scott takes a ball. And everybody has a hit except for Gulikowski slash Maglione and well, that's it. Everybody yeah. else has a hit. Scott strikes out, and they're two away. 
Now batting number 19, third baseman James Maker. Yeah, and Ross Thompson coming in here. and So far, uh, got some quality work in. I mean, got, a, got a couple outs to his credit and strikes out Calvin Scott there. And, you know, it's a four-run game. He's just trying to keep keep Chillicothe where they're at now, keep them in it. James Meager takes outside. He has an RBI double to his credit tonight. Ooh, ooh, that one hurt. Ryan, uh, Ryan not as fortunate as uh, no. Gray was. No, and he, you could see him kind of stretching. Or Gonzalez, I mean. Yeah, kind of stretching. I don't know. That might have got him in the inside of the leg. Hopefully didn't get him any more inside. That one. That For his one. sake, I hope not. Yeah, yeah. I hear you on that one. 1-1 one, one, upcoming from Thompson. Meeker takes low. With two away here, Webb and Ferguson following. Here's the 2-1. Meeker swings through a curveball and it dipped out of the zone. Good pitch from Thompson. Yeah. He looked pretty good here. Yeah, definitely. He's working that curveball, and guys are getting out in front of that curveball, getting on their front foot. They're having a tough time with it. The 2-2 two -two fouled off. Good piece of hitting by Meeker just to stay alive. It might have got a piece of Meeker's foot. He's kind of limping. I think it did get a piece of his foot or off his leg or something. I didn't see that right off the bat, but now that he's kind of moving around, I think it did. Here's a 2-2 ball hit to shallow center, and that's going to fall for a base hit. Not a very good route out there by Lambert. He started going sideways when he should have been coming forward, and that allows for Meeker to get on with a two-out single. And I think part of that was that he didn't know. He, he thought that ball was hit hard, I, I, a lot harder, I think, Lambert did. I, thought he, I think he thought that the ball was going to hang up, too. It really didn't hang up. It was just kind of a looping liner. And a good job by Meeker just to cut the swing down, throw that bat head at the ball, and just put it in play. Well, two outs. Here's Webb. And then he takes outside. Kind of weird. I, I, I feel like yeah, Lambert just pounded his glove a couple times like, man, I really misread that. I don't know if he gets to it anyway. No, you're probably right. But, but still. It just, you know, you kind of just shake your head at that. You're like, oh, what did I just do, you know? Yeah. He might have if he got a good jump off of it, but you know, I don't think he would have. But still, it just kind of, you shake your head. 1-0 is a ground ball to third. Bollinger's throw is in time to get Webb. And for the first time tonight, the Blue Sox do not score a run in an, in an inning. But they hold a 6-2 advantage as we go to the seventh. On July 29th, for our game against the West Virginia Miners, the Woodman's Life Chapter and the Butler Blue Sox will be recognizing the Butler County first responders for everything they do to keep our community safe. We appreciate every dedicated and hardworking individual that serves our community. Our firefighters, police officers, and paramedics work in a stressful and dangerous environment on a daily basis. So, we'd like to give them the opportunity to have a relaxing day at the ballpark where they can enjoy a Blue Sox game capped off by some dazzling fireworks. Go Butler Blue Sox!
New pitcher for the Blue Sox here in the top of the seventh. Stefan Merconja will come on to pitch for uh, replacing Connor Coward. Coward goes six innings tonight, allows two runs on the homer, four hits, no walks, five strikeouts, a quality outing, and the first pitch is fouled out of play by Bollinger. It is Big Mac time here, by the way. Uh, we'll get some numbers on Merconja here on the summer. He is appeared in five games, 12 and two-thirds innings. Ball hit oh boy. rather well to right field, and forget about it, it's gone. Solo home run by Bollinger makes it five to three. So much for the Big Mac. It's, like I said, a solo shot here to begin the seventh. Yeah, and just kind of left it up to Bollinger. Um, and, and I made that point the last yeah, inning when Coward was pitching. A guy like Bollinger, he's a big dude. You don't want to leave the ball up to a guy like that. And he showed you why. He took it off of Taco there. That's a, a good piece of hitting. Sixth home run of the summer, which puts him in the lead for the paint. And now Picnic. Is that the play there? Finish off um, Merconja's line. Called strike here. Merconja, 12 and two-thirds innings, 13 hits, six runs, five earned, two walks, 11 strikeouts, 3.55 earned run average, 1-1 one, one count here with Picnic. And the pitch is low. Mother already has another pitcher warming. Just in case. A little weakly hit foul ball. And excuse me, swing there from Picnic. Uh, I don't think he was looking for an off speed pitch 2 0. He got it and was already committed to swing. The ball popped into center field. Carew drifting over towards right center, has it, and there's one away. A good little response there from Merconj after giving up the. The home run to Bollinger, getting the next guy out that he faced, Picnic. And Picnic had been seeing the ball pretty well. He had a, a screamer off of Coward in his last at bat. A good job getting him out. But now he's got to face Newsom, who already hit a home run today. Here's the first pitch. It's high. Yeah, Newsom with his first home run of the summer. No doubter yeah. over the right center fence. Really, most of the home runs this summer that have been hit here have been no doubters. Yeah, they're really. <laughs> There's been a couple that have just snuck over the fence. Yeah, but, but they've still been hit hard. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, there hasn't been any cheap home runs, but like where the wind carries it or anything. It's been more or less um, liners and absolute missiles, uh, absolute bombs of home runs. And it's been no different today. Three of them today, all of them have been absolutely crushed. 2 1 count here. And here's the pitch. It is in there for oh a called man. strike. Boy, you got, I think he got one there. I it looked so a little too. low. It looked a little low. Newsom didn't like it either. But if you're Merconge, that's where you want to live. You want to stay down there. He's already made a mistake once this inning of leaving the ball up. Got to try to keep that ball low. And now the 2-2. Fastball fouled off. One away here. And here is the 2-2 two -two from Merconja. It's popped up into center field. A couple steps back for Carew. He settles under it, makes the catch, two away. That was a just uh, one where he, he got him to underneath it and just kind of had a high pop up there. It wasn't really much danger in that swing. No, he, he kind of got out on his front foot, I think. Newsom was trying to just foul it off, and he just got more barrel than he wanted to. Pitch looked a, a little out in the way, and he tried to pull it, it looked like. As I said, trying to fight it off, but just popped it up. Swing and a miss from Ryan, who's 0 for 2 tonight. A pause, and here's the 0-1. Nice curveball in there for a called strike. Merconja had a home run in Champion City on Sunday. And now he throws Ooh. one <laughs> way oh up, boy. way high. Yeah. Uh, forget about that one. It's one and two. <laughs> it's a waste pitch for, for sure. Yeah, no doubt about that. 
reared back for that one, did Mercanzi. Un uncorked a heater. One, two, also misses high. A little bit more more near the zone, yeah. but still above the belt. I think that one was an off-speed pitch. That one didn't look. It just didn't break. It's yeah. good, actually probably a good thing it did Yeah, break. definitely, yeah. Would have broke right in the zone. Two, two, fouled off by Ryan. Oof, that one's a bit low. That's a good call. Yeah. 3 2 now, two outs. And that, nobody on. That pitch looked a, a lot better because Ray Gonzalez yeah. made it look better. And that's a, that's a sign of a good catcher there. You got to make your pitcher look good. 3 and 2, Gonzalez, that's right that there one. for called strike three. And that'll end the inning. It's stretch time here. The solo homer by Bollinger makes it no Butler no six, Chillicothe no three as we go to the bottom of the seventh. All right, here's Patrick Ferguson to lead off the bottom of the seventh. Butler ahead, 6-3. Ferguson's ready to go. Here's the first pitch. It is outside. Of course, Ferguson hit one into the next county last <laughs> time up. I think it landed in Evan City. I think it did, too. 1-0, foul ball oh. straight back, <laughs> good Lord. Didn't miss that by much. No. Again, he, Ferguson's known to take a daddy hack or two and he's taken a bunch of them tonight. He's been very good, very good all summer of making us just come oh. out of our seats. Yeah, that home run made me come out of my seat, I tell you that. Was his Majestic home runs. It's just been outstanding to watch. And Ferguson Ooh. takes a curveball. Good pitch yep. from Thompson. And 2 1. I, I don't think that's something Ferguson's looking for. You know, they, they drop a, a curveball right on the inner half. And although that might be a pitch he could turn on. And he'll swing to this one for a strikeout. Third K for Ferguson tonight. But at the same time, he also put one in the seat. Well, not the seats, but the parking lot, I yeah. guess. If a major league ballpark, it would have been in the upper deck. Yeah, yeah, one not a doubt. Yeah, one away for Gonzalez, who's one for three tonight, singled his last time up. That actually uh, brought the hook out for Niggemeyer. Yeah, it did, yeah. Thompson, ever since his committee, he's allowed two base runners. One of them was on an error. Yeah. Last call. And the other one was kind of. Last call. For alcohol. That would probably have been a base hit anyways, but his outfitter didn't help him. No, yeah, you're exactly right. Gonzalez takes a curveball, one Ooh. and one. Let's count. And Ray Gonzalez singled his last time up. Looking to get another hit to his credit tonight. 
Mm, he <laughs> gets fooled by the curve again here. That's, that curve from Thompson is being very, very effective. Yeah, definitely. He's pulling. He's pulling the uh, string on a couple of these guys. They're geared up for the fastball, but that curveball has been his pitch. Here's the one, two. Hard hit ball up the middle. Base hit for Gonzalez. He's two for four tonight. And he collects the 13th hit for the Blue Sox. It's been uh, quite the night with the bats for Butler. Yeah, the bats have been loud all night long. I mean, there's only been one inning they haven't scored in yet. Obviously, this inning isn't over, but that was the last inning, the sixth inning. But the bottom of the order has been able to get on base a lot today. Obviously, Gonzalez, uh, two for four, and Haven Parts is one for three, and Ben Cruz one for three, but he's reached twice. Parks going to bunt. Oh, he puts baby. a good one down. Throw from Thompson. Not in time. A, a beautiful bunt single by Parks. Puts two men on. That was the element of surprise there. And it got the paints. And I don't know if Parks was trying to bunt that ball down the first baseline, but I, I, I that ball died. I mean, just in front of the uh, little circle of home plate. I mean, it died maybe a foot and a half in front of it. And it had some nasty English because it rolled and just stopped. And I mean, it would have taken a, a, a perfect throw to get him. Obviously, um, parks with too much speed and beats it out easy. Yeah, it made it nearly impossible for yeah. Ryan to get there, and uh, Thompson had to g get on his horse from the from the mound yeah. just to make that a close play. Yeah, I mean, that's all you could make it there was close. I mean, you're not expecting a bunt uh, with them up three, but Park certainly, as you said, threw the element of a surprise out there. Carew that'll, lines that'll a down. single into right field. That's going to go all the way to the wall. Carew's around first. He's headed for second. In the score is Gonzalez holding up at third is Parks, and it's now seven to three. Cruz had a good night. Yeah, definitely, and he, he's been on three times. Now has a double and an RBI to his credit. And um, again, the bottom of the order just coming through. Uh, seven, eight, nine, uh, they each have two hits tonight. They're, they're all two for four. Six extra base hits for Butler tonight of their 15. Time called, and everybody's going to get up uh, on the hill and join pitching coach for Chilla Coffee. Thompson, who was cruising right along, is now allowed three straight hits, and that has turned into a run. 7-3 the score, and uh, left-hander warming in the pen for Chilla Coffee. Looks like they might stick with Thompson for now. Hopefully, up by Garrett Proper's going to go out and break this meeting up. It's funny. Every time the umpire gets right there, the meeting ends up being adjourned. Just, just getting him with some exercise. I, on a night like this, I don't think home plate umpire Garrett Proper needs the exercise. He's got probably the most padding on as anybody does. He's, I'm sure he, he's happy to see the sun go down tonight. Yeah, we were talking off air. We both looked at each other and said, we felt like we've done something here yeah. tonight and all we're, all we're doing sitting yeah. here just baking in the sun yeah imagine what he's feeling like with all that extra I'd, I'd gear rather on. i'd rather not to be honest with you i don't envy him at all one out murphy hits a ball to shallow left and coming in to make the catch is orloff runner will tag the throw is not in time parks <laughs> slides in safely ahead of the tag by ryan and it's now eight to three that was a that's a gutsy call to send him because that was Orloff was in shallow left, and, uh, you know, if he puts this throw on the money, he's going to be out by a, a long shot, but good speed from Parks. He gets home, and it's now a five-run game. Yeah, I think that's why he sent him. You know, uh, you don't really have much to lose. You're up. That's true. You're up, uh, what, uh, four runs at that point. That one puts you up five, and, um, you know, with good speed at second, or at third, excuse me, you might as well. Maglione at the plate, check of a second. Here's the pitch, Maglione takes a called strike. And his only at bat so far tonight, uh, ground out to third base. Uh, 
And here's the pitch, a hard oh. hit ball just foul on the other side of the third base bag. That would have at least scored, well, it would have scored Carew, and it might have been three for back then with his speed. That, you know, and that ball was less than a foot away from it hitting that bag, too. And, it, and if it hits that bag, you, you never know what it's going to do. Yeah. That's a fair ball, too, if it hits yeah, it. Yeah, well, definitely. You're right. That could. <laughs> never could, know. Could have went out of play for goodness sake. We sakes. saw a guy get a double on the infield the other night. Swing and a miss, and Magdalene will head down to first. But the throw from Ryan's in time to complete the strikeout. And that will end the seventh. But not before no, Butler no, scores no, two no, more no, on three hits. No errors, and goal. leave one on base. Right, we'll go to the eighth. 8-3 Butler. Derek West will take over on the hill for Butler here in the eighth inning. Stefan Merconja goes one, allows one run on a solo home run, also has a strikeout, but the Blue Sox enjoy an eight to three lead here. This is, uh, check West here, see what, this is his, fourth, no oh wait, no, hold on. Can't find him on here for some reason. Yeah, fourth appearance on the summer. Four, three and a third innings coming into tonight. Three runs on three hits, uh, two walks, four strikeouts. But he's coming off a rehab. Uh, or he's actually currently rehabbing, coming off an injury with, I uh, had Tommy John two years ago, had a knee injury last year. So uh, he's trying to get some work in before he heads back to Pitt in the fall. You can see why he was recruited by Pitt. He's yep. got a long, fluid, uh, effortless, looks like, delivery, and he just yeah. throws gas. Yeah, I was about to say, he makes it look easy. And with that long frame, I mean, he gets almost halfway down that, almost three-quarters of the way down that rubber before that ball's out of his hand. That's, that's impressive. Tall, lanky, he got a good lower half on him, too. Yeah, no two on pegs, who is the opposite of <laughs> Derek West. <laughs> Foul ball out of play. He's he might be 120 pounds soaking wet. Yeah, it might be. You're you're exactly right. And you know this is a, a good matchup though uh, for Derek West. Obviously, Peg is a guy that keeps fighting. Put he's try, he tries to put the ball in play. He, he's going to fight off as many pitches as he can. And West is going to have to work for it for sure. Here's the 0-2. He goes off speed. And almost come in and hit him in the back foot. And he went for that backdoor curve and uh, just missed a tad with it. Here's the one, two. He goes with a curveball oh. again, gets him to swing through it for strike three. That's one thing about Derek, you know, now coming off of you know, that injury. You, you're, not allowed, you're not supposed to throw a lot of off speed pitches those first few times out. You yeah. know, you're supposed to throw a lot of fastballs. And uh, that's what he did. Now he's starting to get to that part where he's able to throw some breaking mm -hmm. pitches. And, and you can see that he's got a pretty <laughs> uh, good curveball to complement that heavy fastball. And there's a fastball to Lambert outside. 
Lambert 0 for 3 tonight. He come, came in tonight leading the paints and hitting at 336. Uh, pitch is a bit low, 2-0. Uh, Zach Owings is second at 319. Tyler Cowles, who's also not in the lineup tonight, 311. So two of the paints' top four hitters not in the lineup tonight. Fastball also Ooh, low, 3 0, just not getting the uh, call in that low part of the z or the borderline part of the zone. Yeah, and Lambert obviously not all that tall either. It kind of makes it tough, the small strike zone with a small guy, obviously. Outside ball four, and that's the first walk issued by a Blue Sox Number pitcher here tonight. Shortstop Chris Patrici. Yeah, and that's not a, a bad walk, though. All around the zone there was West. I mean, it's not like he threw. <laughs> Four pitches that were nowhere close. Those were all right around it. Dallas Hall, who is hitting 279, also not in the lineup tonight. So more of a late, I would say a lighter hitting paints lineup here tonight. Uh, Petrucci, 0 for 3, miss, takes a ball. Check of first, and the one O's. Chop to shortstop, parks on to second, oh. throws it away. And both runners are gonna advance on the error by Pavin Parks. And just like that, the Paints have two runners in scoring position. E6 allows, well, Fielder's Choice E6, right? Because he threw to second. Yeah, it would be a, yeah. Obviously, no out recorded, but it's one of them deals where par Parks kind of looked well, like he, he was trying to f you know, hurry that he throw to, because yeah. Pertucci was, or I'm sorry, um, um, uh, Lambert was yes. close and he just kind of threw it wide of Maglione. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a play where you almost just take your out at first base. You're up three, or yeah. excuse me, five, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, you're five. With the last inning, you just take your out at first base. But, um, you know, a good throw gets him at second base, obviously. I don't know if you get him at first, but... It gets, it gets the lead runner out, that's for sure. Fastball called strike, or swinging strike, I beg your pardon, to Roberts. He singled, and his first appearance has flown out and grounded out since. The 0 1. Called strike on the fastball. That's a good location. I'll see if he busts out that uh, nice breaking. Ball. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see it here. Obviously, uh, if you're Chad Roberts just trying to put the ball in play here, uh, trying to pull something. 0-2. Oh, he does uh, foul it off. Two swing and miss heavy fastball gets Roberts and there are two away. Second K of the inning for West. It's a big K for Derek West. Obviously a, a ball in play would probably score a run and uh, obviously didn't allow it to happen and gets Roberts himself and now one pitch away from getting out of the inning after uh, a two base error. Orloff at the plate will check his swing on a pitch outside. Good curveball. Mm -hmm. That's the first time I think we've seen Derek start with the curveball. We'll check second, and here's the pitch. Fastball low and away. And West uh, falling behind here, but you know, you, you gotta try to get Orloff. You don't wanna see Bollinger come up, um, and especially with the bases loaded. Obviously a 2-0 two, count here. 2-0, so oh. got him to swing it one above the letters. Yeah, yeah that would have been ball three. Um, Orloff got what he wanted though. I'm sure he was looking fastball. He's not, I don't think he was ready for one at the, at the about chest high, but he chases it anyways. 2-1, fouled off out of the stadium. That's what having a good fastball will get you. Yeah. If you fall behind hitters, you can Use that to your advantage and get right back into counts, and that's exactly what Wes has done here. Now he can either, you know, 
go with that curveball or try to punch him out with the heavy fastball. Here it is, 2-2. Fastball, foul Ooh. ball just off the end of the bat. Wow. In fact, Orlov checks the bat. Yeah, I would check the bat after that. It really wasn't much of a, a swing, really. He just kind of just threw his hands and almost one-handed swung at that ball just to foul it off. And he kind of was already committed to swing and did a good job of fouling it off. He's had a ball come out of the bullpen. That's the first time I've ever seen that here. It must have been a heck of a pitch out there. <laughs> they, they made its way out of, at the first base. I saw that in Chillicothe a couple years ago. One of our guys was struggling warming up. And there's a weak ground ball to second. Maglione throws the web. It came across. It gets back to first the time he was going for that ball. Decided to reroute himself to first base. And it works out. A 4-3 put out ends the inning and strands two runners in scoring position. No runs, no hits, one error, and two men left on base. To the bottom of the eighth, Butler eight, and Chillicothe three. Pitcher for Chillicothe here. Casey McConaughey will come in to replace Ross Thompson, who goes two and two thirds innings of relief. Allowed four hits, two runs, both of them earned, no walks, and four strikeouts. So far tonight, only one walk in this ballgame. Yeah, it's been a, well, it's been all earned. Whatever you get has yeah. been all earned tonight, really. Uh, has been no free passes. Uh, well, one, obviously, one free pass. Um, but for a game that's in the bottom of the eighth, that's uh, that's pretty impressive, really. Yeah, Butler leading at eight to three. McConney making his 11th appearance so far this summer. All in relief, 13 innings, 10 hits, seven runs, all of them earned, 19 walks, 20 strikeouts, so he, and uh, a 4.84 ERA. Now, you don't like to see that number, 19 mm. walks in yeah. 13 innings. Calvin Scott takes a ball. Scott's had a good night. He's three hits, two runs scored. Takes a strike here. Scott also with an RBI to his credit. Struck out the last time he came up against Thompson trying to get his fourth hit of the night. McConaughey pitched an inning in two thirds here. Pitch low here. Uh, on July 12th during that four games in three days. Uh, Allowed two hits, one walk, two strikeouts, and did not allow a run in a 11-5 Butler win. That might have been a strike if it stays <laughs> in Ryan's mitt, but yeah. it's a ball three and one. McConaughey goes to Case Western Reserve, a native of Amherst, Ohio. This is six foot, 185 pounds. There's a 3-1. Scott hits it into center field. Lambert drifting back. Now comes back in and makes the catch for the first out.
Now batting number 19, third baseman James Meeker. James Meeker, two for four. Doubled and singled so far as an RBI. Also a couple of fly outs. Lefty lefty matchup. First time tonight we've seen that. And McConaughey's pitches well out of the zone. Blue Sox have spread the runs out here tonight, scoring in every inning except the sixth. Two zero now to Meeker from McConaughey. He's upcoming. Kind of slows the pace down here a little mm -hmm. bit. And ball's popped out of play. Last week uh, we had uh, that one flirted with the light pole. Last week we had actually somebody hit the light pole for the first time in my <laughs> time here. You'd think you'd see that more, to be honest with you. But for whatever reason, it never really happens. And two one. Call it a strike. Good pitch from McConaughey. Somebody wanted to <laughs> that call to be the other way. That's a pretty good pitch. Here's the 2-2. Meeker swings and misses, and Ryan will throw down to first to complete the strikeout. Two away. Christian Webb will be the next man to come up. He's got his work in early. Two RBI double back in the first inning. Got the Blue Sox ahead. They haven't looked back since. Yeah, I would like to see Webb get on here, get Ferguson up one more time. Yeah. And get, you know, he's not all that far away now from, from the all-time prospect league record. Yeah, six off tying it, uh, which was set by Giancarlo Brunoni of these Chillicothe paints in 2013. Or 2012, I beg your pardon. I, they messed that up the last time, too, I was on here. 1-0 to Webb. Oh man, Paul Trey has a pretty good pitch here. Very mm. good pitch. That was a nasty breaker there. Webb kind of tried to get out of the way of it, thought it was going to hit him, drops in for a strike. One, one little foul tip. Webb goes to Cal U down in Washington County, corner of Washington and Green County, and. Uh, the native of Whitby, Ontario. One, two, called a strike three to end the inning. One, two, three, go the Blue Sox here in the eighth, but they enjoy an eight, three lead as okay. we look to close it out here in the ninth. It's time for each and every one of us to face a very troubling fact. There exists a significant heroin and opioid epidemic in not only Butler County, but elsewhere across the country. I'm Rich Goldinger, the District Attorney of Butler County. This is my backyard and yours too. Together, we can work to eradicate the high-level drug dealers that supply these drugs to those using them. Heroin and opioid abuse does not discriminate. Users come from all economic backgrounds, are male and female, it may be teenagers or middle-aged adults. With your help and in conjunction with the Butler County Drug Task Force and the Pennsylvania Office of Attorney General, we can target those dealers who bring this poison into our county. Please report any suspicious activity to your local law enforcement agency, the Pennsylvania State Police, or to my office. This is our ballpark. This is our county. This is our backyard. Let's all say, not in my backyard. Please enjoy tonight's Blue Sox game. Game 
third baseman, Dalton Bollinger. Last chance for the Paints here. We play the top of the ninth. Butler ahead eight to three. Dalton Bollinger at the plate. And he will chop one to shortstop. Parks has it, throw to first, and one quickly away here in the ninth. That's a good job there by Derek West going right after uh, Bollinger. That ball was hit hard. It was a one-hop shot right to Paven Parks, but Paven able to get that on the hop and fire him out. With one out, Picnic, who singled once here tonight, scored a run. He takes a called strike. Uh, quickly around the league, 3-2 West Virginia over Champion City in the top of the six. So a lot, a lot of baseball to play there. But if that holds and this holds, it's back to a half game out of first place. But, of course, West Virginia West nipping right at her heels, too. Uh, Terre Haute six, Quincy nothing in the top of the fourth. 2-1, Springfield over Danville in the top of the sixth. And Lafayette seven, Kokomo two in the top of the fifth. Curveball low here, 2-1 count to Tanner Picnic. Yeah, and, and a good job. That was a great pitch uh, by Derek West. Oh, it did fall out of the zone, but Gonzalez pointed out to him saying, hey, I like where that was at. Yeah. Three and one now. West will take a quick breather. And buckle down here again. And a line drive Ooh. right to the mid of Christian Webb, two away. A nice job by... No. Christian Number Webb, five. who really has come into his own over there at first base. He's played more and more there. It seems he's gotten more confident over there at first base, as we've always talked about. Hasn't really played there that much. No, he hasn't, and, and, and you're right. He has played a lot better. Uh, he um, just looks more comfortable. Yeah. I mean, he's got a first baseman's build to him, too. Like, he, you know, he looks like uh, he's a first. He really doesn't look like a catcher when no. you look at him. It's tall and lanky. Knew, really some, knew some fouls went off here. You're right. And, and uh, you look at Gukowski, um, right. uh, Gonzalez, and, and, um, and, and well, Bolton's a little bit bigger. But yeah. all three of them guys are nowhere near as tall as Christian Webb. He's, he's oh, a, yeah. He looks like maybe he was a guy, I don't know for sure, I'd have to ask him, but he looked like a guy who maybe was a catcher and then all of a sudden hit a growth spurt. And maybe, that's maybe like yeah. There. Yeah, you might be right. I mean, or maybe he just was good at it from yeah. day one. Who knows? That's true. But uh, he does have that first base in the field. And with us only having Ferguson really to play first base this summer, called strike yeah. here, 0 and 2. Paints down to our last strike. Uh, it's nice to see somebody give him a day off, off yep. out of the field. Yeah, and, and let some DH as well. Yeah. It takes his mind off of the field, maybe, and, well, you know, focuses well. on hitting homers. <laughs> well, here's the 0 2 to Newsome. And swing and a miss, strike three. Blue Sox are winners here again tonight. And for the moment, or a half game out of first place, depending on that outcome here tonight. I'm going to head down to the field, talk with Calvin Scott, our player of the game, and then I'll be back up to wrap it up with you, Kellen. Yes, sir. And a big win, as we said, for the Butler Blue Sox. As Jaron said, at, at this stage in the game, a, a, a half game out of first, and uh, another win for the Blue Sox. They improve to 24 and 19 on the year. Chillicothe drops to 21 and 23. And, uh, you know, the bats were on display early. Two, two runs in the first, a uh, run in the second, a run in the third, a run in the fourth, a run in the fifth, and two in the seventh. Uh, Blue Sox offense was on full display. Only had uh, two innings in which they didn't score a run, which that's always a good, good sign. And uh, they had a great pitching performance tonight from Connor Coward. Went six innings of two-run ball, gave up four hits, didn't walk anyone, and struck out five. He gets the win tonight on the mound for the Blue Sox. And Stefan Merconja also with an inning of work, only gave up one run, and Derek West cleaned things up in the last inning for the win. And here's Jaron with Calvin Scott.
and Calvin Scott uh, done with the interview, obviously, after the the uh, water bath. Two buckets wasted, but they get them. They get them there on the second try. Calvin Scott tonight, the player of the game, was three for five on the night, scored two runs, and had an RBI to his credit. Uh, really was big in those first couple innings. Had three hits in his first three at bats through four innings and scored two runs. Had that RBI as well. So, Jaron is now back and stayed managed to stay dry again, which is a good thing. I didn't even know it was coming the first time. Ferguson uh, with a little sneak attack. I don't know how Calvin saw it the last second. But you know what gives it away? All the guys start looking. They they start uh, they start like looking around and then. You know, well, Calvin the whole time was peeking over you. I yeah. don't know if you saw that, but and don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. But hey, another great, great night here. I believe that's six in a row we've won at home. It is. I believe so. I believe you're right. So I uh, can't complain about that. Uh, home cooking's been good, and right now we're right in the middle of a playoff race, and we're having a good time watching this team play here every night, and we'll get to do it again tomorrow. When uh, the Paints are here to finish off a set for the final time this year, it'd be a shame to see them go. <laughs> the way we've uh, we, we've uh, had their, our way with them this year. But Still 3-2 West Virginia in the bottom of the sixth. Uh, you can check point streak for that. Uh, let's see, final score tonight, 8-3, 24-19 and 19 of Blue Sox improved to while the Paints fall to 21-23. and 23. Uh, Kellen, anything else you want to say before we uh, head off for tonight? No, again, uh, the Blue Sox, you hit it on the head. They're playing great ball together right now. The team looks like they're having fun together. Uh, things are starting to come together just the whole way around. And uh, it's a fun time to be a Blue Sox fan and a part of the Blue Sox as well. I and mean, this has been the most fun I've had here in, in a couple years watching this team play well. So they keep doing they keep doing what they need to do. They keep winning. And what else can you ask for? You can't ask for much more. But uh, hopefully we continue this solid streak. Tomorrow, it'll be Nick Bucci on the hill for the Blue Sox, and Zach Harvey is the probable for Chillicothe. Final score one last time tonight, 8-3. Butler, for my broadcast partner, Kellen Garcia, for my producer, Carter Stanton, I want to thank everybody for listening tonight. We'll do it again tomorrow at 6.35 when the Blue Sox host the Paints for the final time this season. Have a good night, and uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow.